Back again, your boy Mark NM, UFC fan, bringing you the latest news. And now we tackle some of the media reports. You know what I'm saying? The journalism, they're amazing people. They are intelligent people. They have jobs to do. But sometimes we have to debunk the trash that they do. And sometimes we have to come in and bring the actual truth to the Man United fan base because we are fans just like you are. I'm a fan. I love this club and I don't want to be led astray. So let's jump into these stories because there's lots of reports and let's debunk them really quickly. First, let's get you all the information. Let's get you caught up and then let's debunk. Big up to you guys coming in. It's your boy. Smash the likes and subscribe on the road to 10K, but we have to get to 2K first. Can we get there by my birthday? December 1st is D-Day. Let's go, guys. Big up to all of you watching and here we go with the first story. You know how it is. Arguing about transfers is the remark that was crucial as Thomas Tuchel chose England over Manchester United. By whom? There was no reports by Thomas Tuchel, but let's get into the story. Thomas Tuchel re reportedly held talks with Manchester United this summer. Crucial factor. But it's felt that arguing about transfers was a crucial factor for him favoring the English job where this won't be an issue. Tuchel was at the top of the target for Manchester United, co-owner Sir Jim Radcliffe, but the German tactician has now ended up taking the chance to replace Gareth Southgate as the Three Lions boss. You know, according to Sport Bill, there were a few other names in the frame for the England job, but Tuchel emerged a top target despite big names like Pep, Jurgen Klopp, and Eddie Howe seem to be seemingly being discussed. Tuchel has clearly the credentials to be a big for the big jobs and big roles like these. Having won trophies at clubs like Bayern Munich, Paris Saint-Germain, and perhaps most impressively, the Champions League at Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel for England. Has his Man United chance gone? Well, regarding this, some reports are coming in by some journalists who have no source that says Tuchel chance with the Red Devils may now have gone, as it's now clear that he will be with England for the long term, and that might impact things further down the line. Still, perhaps overall, United fans can take one positive of this, and it has often seemed like Agreements over transfers has been an issue for Tuchel at every single club he has been at. He has never been had that. He has never not had the problem. He's also suffered from an 18 month streak at all the clubs he has been at, where he always, in 18 months, falls out of favor by virtue of action with the executive committees. Now, this might end up being the issue for the 51 year old at Old Trafford, but now he can just focus on things with England. Guys, I would like to remind you that there has been no report of this coming out as someone who spoke to Tuchel or anyone who has spoken with anyone close to Tuchel. This is an assumption made by the media based on the fact that they know all the things that we know about his past actions with the various clubs and his inactions as well. Now, moving right along, and it's Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank, guys. Well, this guy, it, you know, I know some people favor him. He has done a decent job with Brentford, but this guy, he lacks it. You can just look at his, his eyes. Look at his face. He does not have the character to be a Manchester United manager. He's always second in guessing himself. He sounds super unconfident. He sounds like he doesn't even have the courage to take the role. The Brentford boss respond, responding after last week saying, the manager job is the most pressurized job in all of football management in the Premier League. He don't know if he could, if that pressure is warranted. He's all saying maybe he needs the challenge at United. Maybe. Do you guys, Man United fans, want a coach who's saying maybe he needs the challenge? This guy's not a winner, guys. It's through and through. But let's get into this story because it's another wild one. You know, we have never spoken with him. There's always talks coming in about, you know, he's a considered. But we have not. Not with intermediaries. Not directly. It's not happening. Currently, the Brentford boss is a candidate to replace Eric Ten Hag, as reported by this media story, with no actual sources. Again, the Brentford manager, Thomas Frank, has said to moving a bigger club would not make his life better, but admits a new job could be the challenge that he needs. Sounds like a loser to me. You know what I'm saying? Frank was a candidate to replace Eric Ten Hag in the summer. We never spoke to Frank, by the way, and continues to be linked with Old Trafford to move. We spoke to several coaches, 
Thomas Frank was not one of them. I'm sorry. But Frank has stressed this commitment to Brentford and said he's already at one of the best clubs in the world. Mid-table, he has no pressure to win. Why would he want to come and be pressured to win week in, week out? Come on, guys. We need to think logically. This is not working out. Speaking on the Sports Agent podcast, Frank said, who knows what will happen in the future? As I said many times, I think it's very important because I'm probably one of the in, at one of the best clubs in the world. Why should I leave this place? <laughs> Brentford never won anything, but they're one of the best clubs in the world. Big up to him, though. But things can happen. You can't wait one new inspiration. If I ever got an offer from a bigger club, if I ever got an offer from a bigger club, if I ever said Thomas Frank, I, I, and I decided to go there, it would probably not make my life better. And that's if he ever got an offer from a bigger club. I think we all know that, but hey, that, that's maybe the challenge. You know I need to try. Ten Hag is under pressure at United after having managed only three wins in their opening eight Premier League matches. Frank, the Premier League's second most longest silver manager, has done a brilliant job in six years at Brentford and says he still feels that he has unfinished business at the club. Mind you, Brentford has never finished above seventh or eighth in the league since he's got there. So he's done an impressive job at finishing mid-table and below 10th. That's what the amazing job he's done for the last six years. Frank says Brentford's success is down to the culture at the club. They've won nothing. What success? You know what I mean? I think data is good, but I think our real secret is sauce, is our ingredients in the sauce. And this is the culture and togetherness. I think that's where we stand out in many ways. It's more clear strategy, clear alignment from the top to bottom. Good people working hard, same direction every single day. And then the people up top do something very, very rare in football. They take good, good sensible, calm decisions. 100%. Well, that's great. That's great, Thomas Frank. Thanks for your contribution, guys. Let's move on to another possible manager option that's being touted by the media. And the media are going big with this one, guys, because they are reporting that this could be this is a deal that we are trying to do through intermediaries and it's being reported that Manchester United held shock talks with Xavi over replacing Eric Ten Hag next season Manchester United have contacted the former Barcelona boss Xavi Hernandez on multiple occasions this season as Eric Ten Hag's future has remained uncertain our report has claimed with no actual sources again guys just to, re to remind you of this, the Dutch coach oversaw United's worst ever start to a Premier League season heading into the in October international break, boasting eight points from seven games. Ten Hag tentatively eased the pressure with a convincing victory over Brentford last weekend, but that hasn't stopped the club's hierarchy from exploring alternative managerial candidates. Mind you guys, I have to remind you what I said in the summer. They are also searching for a manager for OG Nice. There is going to be a manager they're trying to hire for OG Nice. They tried to get Potter in for the job. Let's see how it goes. And I would remind you guys, be careful because it could just be one of those things where Nice are trying to bring in a manager for OG Nice so they can take the levels up. And maybe people are thinking they're talking about Man United, but it might not be the case. They want to win the French League as well. I have other news to confirm this will be in another stream, so stay tuned for more. But big up. Let's keep it going. The United Chief Executive Omar Barada has led talks with Xavi, according to the Daily Mail. Of course, if you want to believe every tabloid, believe the Daily Mail. The Premier League Giants have met with the former Spain international at least twice since he moved, since he left Barcelona in the summer. Mind you guys, we have spoken to six managers in the summer, and Xavi was not one of them. Minority shareholder Jim Radcliffe has also apparently met with Xavi while in Barcelona. But it's not part of the four-person delegation, which has repeatedly been in dialogue with a 44-year-old over the last few weeks, as reported by the Daily Mail. Right? Xavi spent the best part of three seasons in charge of a club where he represented 17 years during his trophy-laden playing career, leading Barcelona to the 22-23 La Liga title. And the beleaguered boss announced that he would step down in January 2024, calling his role unpleasant and cruel. Barcelona president Juan Laporta spent the subsequent four months openly asking Xavi to reconsider his position, eventually convincing his coach to stay in April, only then to sack him at the ending of a disappointing trophy-less campaign. United have not limited their managerial search to Xavi. There's also some, some reports linking us to Ruben Amarim. But although he's considered being a leading target for the Manchester City job if they're to part ways with Pep Guardiola this summer, Ten Hag vehemently responded to rumors impending his exit as last week as lambasting the whispers as fairy tales and lies, which is 100% true 
because there are reports coming in that Ruben Amarim said that he was contacted not by the hierarchy of Manchester United, but by those of Manchester City. So let's keep it real, guys. Some things are just not true. And the last time we've spoken to any coaches was in July, not even in August, guys. So moving right along, and this is the big one. This is the one that they really stayed up all night to talk about. They planned this right. And they're now saying that Simeone Inzaghi has agreed to become Man United boss from 25-26 after a successful video interview. This is the late update coming out of Italy right now. And it's backed by no one. But uh, let's, let's see how it goes. The report coming out of Italy tonight suggests Simeone Inzaghi has already agreed to become the next Manchester United manager. Despite watching his side get back to winning ways in the Premier League at the weekend, Eric Ten Hag is having to, de to deal with more reports about United seeking the services of other managers because the media is simply making this up. I'm sorry to say, guys, but, you know, all the reports are coming in that we haven't spoke to anyone in the last three months. We haven't spoke to anyone since we renewed Eric Ten Hag's contract. And in yours, maybe they might be talking through in intermediaries, but they have not initiated any manager suit. Or thus yet, they are backing this manager so far. But Thomas Tuchel has been appointed England manager, which has put an end to that speculation after speaking with the English FA and negotiating for two weeks, while there was reports that he was speaking to Man United at the same time, which, again, I would employ to you all, was not true. And Ten Hag survived the October international break with a multiple media outlets suggesting that Ineos would sack the manager. According to the Inter Interlive, it Inzaghi has already given the green light to coach Manchester United next season, and the minor details are said to be taking shape. The, in, the agreement states that Inzaghi's move to Old Trafford isn't imminent and is not expected to be until the end of the season. And it adds that Inzaghi has been offered an almost unlimited budget, which doesn't sound right with the club cutting costs. That said, they will still need to reinforce the squad next summer. Reports in Italy seem to believe that in, it will be Inzaghi's job to lead United in the future following a couple of video interviews with the club officials. But sources isn't the most credible. Inzaghi is currently in charge of the Italian outfit Pisa. It feels like underwhelming one. There's truth in it. Guys, this is what I have to say to you guys. But the real, real story right now, guys, which no one is covering, is some reports that are coming in by all the coaches of Manchester United who were working with Ten Hag. And former coach Mitchell van der Gaag explains why he thinks Eric Ten Hag will succeed at Manchester United, guys. And it's interesting to understand this statement because if you know what, Mitchell van der Gaag was his assistant for over the last seven years. Since coming on board ahead of the new season, Ineos not only founded a massive summer signing, but also decided to revamp the Eric Ten Hag's coaching staff. They were far from impressed with the Red Devils' worst ever Premier League finish and decided changes were required in the hierarchy of the club in the coaching structure. Incoming, for, incoming former striker Ruud van Nistelrooy, Rene Hacker from Go Ahead Eagles, while former assistant manager and second in command Mitchell van der Gaag left along with Benny McCarthy and Steve McLaren. Van der Gaag had been there with Ten Hag during his years at Ajax and followed him to Manchester, but eventually left the role as he wanted to experience a senior managerial role after years of being an assistant. Van der Gaag spills the beans on United spell. While he's yet to find a new project, the former centre-back spoke about why he felt it was time to leave United and pursue his own career ambitions. What happened? Well, not so much. My ambition is to become a head coach again. After the first being an assistant at Ajax and then at Manchester United, it's great to be an assistant, but at a certain point, you have to follow your ambitions again, he told NOS. Despite a poor league season, the former Martimo boss did clinch a Carabao Cup and the FA Cup in his two seasons at Old Trafford, and he spoke glowingly of his time in the English top flight. He also explained why the league is the most competitive in the world and how that helped him hone his craft. Those two years were great years because you really work at the top. I'm not just talking about United, but also the entire competition. Normally you see the Premier League on television. Now I was in the middle of it. If you look at the tactical variation to use a coaching term, it is top in the Premier League. It was enjoyable. He was inevitably asked about Ten Hag's future after the club's worst start in the league in 35 years, and Van der Gaag explained that the result at Brentford would afford his compatriot more time to try to fix things at the club. The former United assistant coach explained that Ineos did trust Ten Hag, but he has been in, but that has, been, but as has been the case at the Theatre of Dreams since Alex Ferguson's retirement, it is far more challenging a job than most people are aware of. 
But he was bullish about Ten Hag's prospect due to his inability to keep looking forward and working towards the intended goal and not letting the outside known noise bog him down. You see, with Ineos, he said that they are in line with Ten Hag and they dare to look ahead. But in that whole process, you need results. In that respect, it is nice that you enjoyed the last weekend, Brentford wins. You know what I mean? If it was an easy job, everyone could be there. Since the departure of Alex Ferguson, there have been ups and downs. The great thing about Eric is he always keeps looking ahead and moving forward. You can't control the rest. The 20-time English champions will look to build on the weekend result when they take on Fenerbahce tomorrow in the Europa League, and they look to grab their first win of the competition against former United boss Jose Mourinho. Guys, it's been a, a wonderful presentation to you all. Let me know in the comments what you think. Please leave your comments and your criticisms for the stream. Let me know your thoughts. But this is the truth coming out by multiple outlets right now, disparaging some of the recent reports of the media with this manager search. It has been totally made up. And I feel sorry for them because they need a job to do. They have their job to do. But for some reason, they keep spreading lies. Big up to each and every one of you. I hope you have a wonderful day. It's been your boy, Mark and MUFC fan. Tune in later on because I got the manager's press conference coming up live, which I will actually be live. Big up to you, my, my, my lovely friends and family in the Man United fan base. We are all one dream, one heart, and one goal. United, the best in the world. Forever and ever, always a red. Big up to each and every one of you from your boy, Mark and MUFC fan. Big up, my guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you can join me again. Stay tuned. Maybe you should subscribe. Share it around to your Twitter. And you know what? Help the channel grow, guys. Thank you so much in advance. Big up. And again, have a great one. Thank <laughs> you.